God is non-binary, God is queer, God is autistic. Let me unpack that for you. No, you don't need to unpack it. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right. I'm ready. God is non-binary because God is the author of gender. God is genderless and genderful. They are neither male nor female, and they are both. Wait. How can you be neither male nor female and both? So if a creator creates something, the creator can't be part of the creation. Like, a painter isn't part of the painting that they make, or an engineer isn't part of the thing that they build. So in the same way, God isn't part of creation, so he doesn't have any physical attributes like we do. He's immaterial, he's spirit, he's not like us. They refer to themselves both as male and female throughout the text, and yet theology would tell us that God does not have gender, so by definition, God is non-binary. You have a bunch of things that don't add up here. You can't be genderless and genderful, so... Let's throw that out. You can't be neither male nor female and both. So let's throw that out. Assuming, you know, that we have the laws of logic here, that you can't be both something and not something at the same time. Let's look at the actual arguments that he makes here instead of just saying a whole bunch of nonsense. So he says that God refers to himself as both male and female throughout the text. He refers to himself as male throughout the text, as in God the Father, female, no, he doesn't say God the Mother, there's no Mother Nature, there's nothing like that. God does not technically have a gender, yes. He's spiritual, he's not male or female because guess what? Male and female is decided by our physical qualities like chromosomes. You're assuming that we have those physical qualities in order to make the case that God is neither male nor female. God is immaterial. So he doesn't have a gender, technically, but he refers to himself as God the Father throughout the text. You have to accept that Jesus is God, by the way, in order to assume that. So, I mean, at least we have that common ground. God is queer because, like gender, God is the author of all sexualities. All sexualities exist in God, and yet God is not explicitly sexual. And since asexuality is part of the LGBTQ spectrum, we can say God is queer. Bruh. I just... I just said, a creator can't be part of the creation. If God is the author of all sexualities, they can't all exist in him. That doesn't make any sense. We're talking about sexualities, which has to do with our physical bodies, physical people here on earth, one person being attracted to another person. And if God is immaterial, then he's not a part of that at all. He's outside of that. So he's outside of sexuality. But God is not the author of all sexualities. You know that he says that homosexuality is wrong, for example. Or he also says that male and female were created for each other. That's literally just being straight. <laughs> That's the one sexuality. Anything other than that is against what God's will is, and he can't have created those things because he is the standard of good, so he can't create evil. Well, and since asexuality is part of the LGBTQ spectrum, we can say God is queer. The spectrum changes all the time. <laughs> First it was just lesbian and gay, then it was bi, then it was trans, then it's queer, then it's plus, then it's divided by four, then it's, I don't know, anything. But that's still something that we created. That's not God's standard. God created a standard. He laid it out in the Bible. End of discussion. And finally, God is autistic because autism is a divergence from typical neurology. And since no being in existence has a mind like the mind of God, God is by definition neurodivergent. And as an autistic person, I like to say God is autistic. It doesn't matter what you like to say. We actually have to look at the truth. God is autistic because autism is a divergence from typical neurology. Johns Hopkins. Neurology is the branch of medicine that is concerned with the study and treatment of disorders of the nervous system. They're not the only people that say this either. There's lots of others that say that. And if we're talking about neurology, and we're talking about a physical system here, the nervous system, God doesn't have one. God is immaterial. We've been over this. You're using the word neurology in your definition for this, but you don't understand that God is not material, so he can't have all of this. 
God always identifies with and as the most marginalized people in society. With the most marginalized people in society? Yes, a lot. Widows, orphans, blind, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. As the most marginalized in society? No, he's God. Take a look at the pillars of the ancient Jewish fathers. David, Solomon, Abraham, Moses, Isaiah, many others. They had power over a lot of people, they had sway over a lot of people, and they were not marginalized. These people God still identifies with because all of us are created in the image of God. So God doesn't always identify with the most marginalized. He identifies with all of us. It doesn't matter if you're marginalized in society. It matters if you accept God as your Lord and Savior. And that is not determined by any social status. Here's what God actually says about himself. He calls himself, I am. That means he existed before the universe did. He's outside time, space, and matter. He's outside the gender binary. He's outside all of that kind of stuff, which means he's not contained in any of it and can't be described by any of this. It's not like we're comparing him to us and trying to see if he fits in with our group. He's literally the standard of all of these things, so we're trying to compare ourselves with him. Lastly, I'll just say, if you're so hung up about all this kind of stuff, then I'll just say something simple to you that hopefully you will understand. God calls himself God the Father throughout the text. Why don't you just take a second and respect his pronouns? This isn't the first TikTok person I've responded to, and it probably won't be the last. If you want to see my other one, take a look up here, and if you want to see other things that the Bible doesn't say, take a look down here. See you next time.